<laughs> we had, it's just a high attendance Sunday, but since we're just kicking this off, I'm going to call it our base. And our base attendance today was 87. <laughs> Today. It's every Sunday at 10 a.m. We have classes for all ages. I have um, I've asked the teachers to come up with a name for their class, not just a grade level or age level. And we've already got Miss Shauna's zero to pre-K. Stand up and tell them what your class is named. My class is named Dolores Darby. studying their lessons and they're ready to teach. So y'all come on out at 10 a.m. every Sunday for Sunday school. Thank you. Thank you. We have a weekly service every Sunday, Wednesday night, starting at 5.30 for our dinner. And uh, then we'll have Bible study. Those things start at 6.15. Uh, so uh, those things can start at 6 o'clock around 4.30, 4.45. And then we can have the books and get to that. Then we'll get to that and come back. So if you're a teen and you can work that day, just let me know, please. All right. So that's the 21st. <clears throat> be cooking on the day before, correct? Be cooking on the day before. November the 4th, men's breakfast, 8 a.m. As I mentioned last week, that might have changed from your calendar. You had it was in October, but it was the same Saturday as the car show, so we moved it. Uh, so let me know if you can be here for that. <clears throat> November the 8th. The 11th of November is the Harmony Senior Dinner, hosted by Vertical Student Ministries. So we'll have that going on and more to sign up for that. Any of the Wednesday night activities, like today, the youth will be going to the Junior Vertical, is that correct? Junior, junior, junior Vertical is going for Putt Putt and that kind of thing. If there's a QR code on here, you can go ahead and sign your kid up for that. We have to have the insurance and the waiver form if the kids are going on that. So please sign up for those things. Uh, we got several uh, other announcements here. One, the Hightower Baptist Association uh, Food and Clothing Bank is once again gearing up for Bless the Child Christmas 2023. Last year, they were able to serve approximately 2,200 children from 690 families with the help of local communities. Um, their first sign up was September the 9th, and they'll hold additional sign ups in October and November. They currently have 149 families with 409 children at the first sign up. They're moving the toy distribution day to December the 2nd from 8 to 11. This is different from years past, and so they're moving it up and early. Please contact if you or someone you know is willing to sponsor a child for Bless a Child 2023 Christmas. And they'll see you manage gender, age of the child, and you will then shop for the child, spending $60 per child you signed up for. This only includes toys and other fun stuff. It does not include uh, clothes, food, or any items like that. The food bank is handling all of that. So there's lots of information on this. I'm not going to try to read it all. But we'll post this on the bulletin out front. So uh, last year, 2,200 children were able to be blessed from this. And this year, they have 409 already signed up. So if you or someone you know, and of course, we will have our annual tree here as well, too. So. If you or someone you know needs to, uh, wants to sign up for this, get with me and we'll get that to you. Any other announcements before we go into prayer requests? I have two. Um, okay. with, I know the church likes to do pickleball, but we also like to help the community and our, our athletic teams at the high school. So 
them, you know, I help with the softball, but I know the baseball team is hosting a football tournament. Um, it's eighty dollars per team to sign up, and it's October twenty eighth. So if you want more information on that, um, come see me and I can share it with you. But also, Caroline and I are trying to narrow down Christmas play. Um, we're gonna do eighth grade and below. Um, so if you're um, somebody who wants a speaking part, come see one of us and let us know. We're gonna try to start October fourth with next week being fall break. I don't know. Hope Stephanie says no. So we're gonna try to start the week after fall break, which is October. Thank you. But, <clears throat> Joy, the team's going on the road. That's the first time. <laughs> We're going to bring him uh, bring a sack full of wrenches like the guy on Dodgeball. Can you dodge a wrench? You can dodge a dodgeball. <laughs> Let him start throwing at him. Any, any other announcements? Uh, we have the prayer list this week. We have convinced the prayer list now if we said we would every three or four weeks we'd, we'd take them off and move them back around. If you if someone you love is missing, uh, we need to carry do this to keep the list condensed and keep everybody's mind fresh. And two, sometimes we put them on the prayer list and we don't ever give an update. So if uh, you have a loved one that was on there that was took off, stand up, give us an update, we'll put them back on there. Uh, it's completely... Uh, she, she does not take those off. I'm the one that makes that call. So if, if someone's missing, please come to me with it. Um, our youth, our schools, leaders of our country, uh, military unspoken request, Pinky, Virginia, Faye Grant, Tapley Chastain, Sean Carnahan, Evelyn Kiswell, Carrie Falstrom, Ray Gober, who is home now, thank God. Amen. You want to give an update on him? First, thank you all for praying for my dad. He is actually home. He still have brain tubes out of his gallbladder. Uh, the gallbladder has to come out due to the infection, but he's just not quite ready and stable enough to do that. So um, hopefully in a couple weeks, Lord willing, the infection and bacteria will stay down and we'll be able to go in and take that gallbladder out. But we wanted to go to church this morning, but my mom said that's a hard no. <laughs> uh, I don't know what they're doing with this man. They won't let him eat fatty foods and they won't let him go to church. They're just going to take the bag and stride out of it. <laughs> Casey Forrest and David Hart. David, you want to give everybody a report on your test this week? Well, you can take my name off the list because I'm back. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for the prayers, the phone calls, and the texts we got. And uh, the results were very good. Thank Amen. you. When David called me from the recovery room, he was telling me, he said I had a little abnormal heart. I was strange. I was a little different. I was like, exactly how I expected this to start. <laughs> so, uh, but we're thankful, David. I mean, it's been a, a worry for you the last couple, not really a worry, but a prayer of yours for the last couple weeks. So we're thankful. Becky, I know that's a load off you too as well. I'm worried about him being home by himself and not going to be even supervision. So. Uh, any other prayer requests? Anybody else? Oh, yeah. Um, we received a group text this week from D. Uh, Kajanko, me and Alicia did. Uh, Coach Kajanko, uh, and I, I'm going to get this right. Do you want to? So, Coach, a few years back, a couple years back, had cancer. Went through the treatments and part of those treatments, that's what's one of the things. And his aortic valve is leaking to the point it can't keep doing the ones through it. So they're all doing surgery on the 20th of October. Um, their lives at their age is very, very busy. She had a women's conference for coaches' wives for college coaches that she had planned for a year. They put that on hold and had to change that. They had a um, anniversary trip plan and some other things. Coach had a whole group of men that he was going to minister to and be with, and they had to put that on hold. And uh, they spent these last couple of weeks just spending time with family because this is a very, very serious surgery for Coach when he goes in. Uh, he's trying to make sure right now through the test that his kidneys, and his heart, his lungs, and other things can handle the surgery. So y'all pray for Coach Kajanko and Miss D as he goes through this journey. Anyone else? I have a praise report. Okay. 
Christopher is one year seizure free yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody stand your feet. Ready to select and take up the morning offer. We'll do that. Turn it back over to the clock. We do have a special visitor here with us today from the Bill Krills here from the, uh, Gideon International. He's going to be speaking to us here in just a minute. Um, he said he went to a church a couple weeks ago up in Rome and there was another Oaks Fall up there. So God didn't make a mistake when he called me the pastor. He called other Oaks Falls the pastor. That's right. so, but uh, we're glad to have him here with us today. He drove all the way from Cartersville this morning. So y'all please love and take care of him and show him love and support today as well. We look forward to hearing about his work and their ministry in the Gideon. So we're glad to have him here with us today. I'm going to ask Brother Bill if he'll lead us in a word of prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, it's such a blessing to be here at this great church today. We thank you for this turnout. We thank you that we are assembled together to worship and praise your name. And we thank you, Lord, even though we come from afar and we come and visit with this church, we feel like that we're, we're family because we're brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, for the answered prayer. And we pray for those who will be coming up on ser serious surgeries, those who have uh, other needs. Lord, we know that we can take them to you because you will fulfill the needs that we have and your will will be done. Thank you for the, those who are able to give today, and I pray you'll just continue to bless this pastor and bless this church as we go through this service today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Page 204, 204.
During a recent scheduled placement of Gideon Bibles in a local hotel, the request to place Bibles in a newly renovated hotel was turned down. The reason was, was because the rooms were now being designed to appeal to younger business travelers, and the typical nightstands were replaced with open shelves on both sides of the bed. So a couple of months later, I was compelled to go back to the hotel and ask, but this time before I went in, I got down in my car and I prayed and asked for God's will to be done. When I went in to speak to the manager, he said without hesitating that he wanted Bibles for all 66 rooms. Do you believe that prayer changes things? Amen. Amen. I don't know if you know this, but one Gideon Place Bible has the potential to reach more than 2,300 people during its coverage life in a hotel room. Well, the Gideons International is a group of Christian business and professional men who are dedicated to distributing and placing God's word around the world. With the Lord's leading, Gideons have been changing lives for over 120 years. Today, there are thousands of members in 199 countries. Since 1899, this ministry has distributed over 2.5 billion Bibles in more than 109 languages. And you know, the last 20 years, that number has really increased. Uh, I'm, I'm anticipating within the next four or five years, we will hit that 3 billion mark. We now offer workshops 
for churches that instruct participants on conversation evangelism. That's something new. What pastor or what leader or staff person does not want to see their church members participate in evangelism? We all need to be doing that. And from the looks of this church, I believe you're doing that. You're reaching out. But this gets all of us involved, and we can provide help on that type of workshop. Last year, over 70 million Bibles were distributed worldwide. That equates to two people receiving a, a copy of the Scripture every second. But the need is even greater than before. Locally in uh, Dawson County, COVID has really just put a number on us. You know, we've, we've been uh, restricted on what access we have to hotels and doctor's offices and, and so on and so forth. But we see the light at the end of the tunnel. Things are starting to open up for us now. Uh, during the Dawsonville Harvest Moonshine Festival, uh, they were open, uh, a, able to have a stand there, a booth there, to distribute Bibles. Uh, hotels are now opening up. Veterinarian hospitals, doctors and dentist offices and medical facilities are now opening up. And at the Amalekola State Park, the uh, Bibles were placed there. And we heard this morning that uh, one of the new things that the Gideons are offering is uh, VBS and backdoor or backyard Bible clubs Testaments can be given out during those uh, events to uh, 10 years old uh, young people. And they had 52 of those testaments given out this year. So we're thankful for everything that we're able to do around the state of Georgia. You know, we don't know exactly how God uses his word to change lives, but we know he does. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, 11, which is kind of the life, life verse of the Gideons, the Bible says, so shall my word that be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. That can't be truer to a young lady named Sandy, who was sitting in the front seat of her car with the tools to commit suicide and had planned to do so that very night. As she was crying in despair, she leaned back in her seat and her arms dropped down to the side of her seat and she was able to reach and felt something under her seat and it turned, about, turned out to be one of these personal workers' testaments that the auxiliary give out, which are the wives of the Gideons uh, in, in some of their uh, uh, distri distribution areas. She pulled this personal workers' testament out and she opened it, opened the front of it. She had no idea what this scripture was all about but she did see in the front of it that there's topics that address all kinds of needs, even one that deals with suicide. It's taken from Psalm 143, verses 7 through 11. So she read that, and then at the back of the Bible, there's in large print the word, God loves you. She had not expressed love or even known about love in years and years. When she read that the God of this universe sent his son to die on the cross, the Holy Spirit convicted her, and she gave her life to Jesus Christ right there in the front seat of her car. You know, Sandy said that she was a personal, perfect example of how far the Gideon ministry goes. It even reaches out to the brink of suicide, and that's where she was. I noticed in, in the uh, lobby of your church in the front there that you do have some Gideon cards. Uh, not only do we uh, like for people to participate in sending Gideon cards to, in memory of, of those who have passed on, but you can do it in honor or in appreciation or even thank you. So we can get more information to, to you about that. Uh, and it's, it's such a blessing. Even if you just send one Bible is $5 and a New Testament is $1.80. Danny did not grow up in a Christian home and therefore, he didn't attend church. But one day in the fifth grade, how many fifth graders do we have in here? Wow, that's good. I see some. But one day in the fifth grade, something incredible happened to Danny's life. Gideon's came to his school classroom carrying boxes of red testaments similar to these. The men instructed students to raise their hands if they wanted one. And when they got the Bible, they needed to go to John 3.16 and read it, just as the men suggested. Well, Danny did this. He, he took his scripture home. He read it. 
And after reading, he was convicted of his sins and he trusted Christ as a savior. And in the back, there's a place where you can sign your name that you personally gave your life to Jesus Christ. Danny grew up and served in the United States Army Military Police. He received a military New Testament from the Gideons and used it to reach others for Jesus Christ. After the Army, he spent seven years as a police officer using the military testament that he got to win people to Christ and also help them with their stresses and hardships that they have when they're in the military. During this time, Danny felt compelled to go to be a pastor. So for the past 20 years, Danny has served as pastor and is eternally grateful for the role of that red New Testament that he still has and it, what it, the role it played in his life. Danny said that one day when I get to heaven, the first thing I'm going to do is hug Jesus, and the next thing I'm going to do is find a Gideon and tell him how much I appreciate the testaments that they gave them. I know right now, uh, and I'm speaking from my heart, is, is a prayer need because Dawson County does not at this particular time allow testaments to be given to fifth, fifth graders. But when we met this morning for our prayer time, our, our guys said that they're going to approach the school superintendent and ask if that could be started again because it stopped about seven years ago. And we really want to make that a, a, a matter of prayer. And I pray that you'll join me in that. The final thing I want to talk about is that the Gideons are even in, involved in the prison ministry. We have 10 state prisons where um, the Bible, we have Gideons that go visit those state prisons and they visit with the inmates, they have prayer with them, and uh, they spend time with them and, and just talk to them about the Lord. Well, this started in 2016. It's called the Tear Cell Ministry. And during this time, we have 52,000 state prisoners in the state of Georgia. And currently, trained Gideons take turns visiting any one of those 10 state prisons. And the one in north, northwest Georgia that we're, we're a part of is Hayes State Prison in Tryon. Uh, they spend several hours with the offenders. They visit with them, and they, and they give them the gospel. Since this program started in 2016, over 2,000 conversions have been made in the state prison in Georgia. Yesterday, when we had our Gideon meeting in Cartersville, we found out that two, two of our Gideons went to, to Hayes State. They visit, they visit once a month, and six inmates gave their life to the Lord just in that one visit. So God is doing a tremendous work. The final thing about the, uh, the Gideon ministry in the, in the prisons is that we have the auxiliary that write letters to the inmates, and it's not typed on the computer. It's handwritten. And we do it twice a year, Easter and Christmas. So they're gearing up for their Christmas letter. <clears throat> and they write it to the inmate and tell them how much that they are going to pray for them and wish that, uh, to support their family and how much that God loves them. Well, they've been doing this uh, for, so for several years. And there was one inmate at Hay State who planned to commit suicide on the very day that he got his letter. He testified that the love shown to him in that letter by a stranger saved his life. I just want to say, first and foremost, thank you for your prayers. The Bible says in James 5.16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Secondly, your gifts are appreciated. And again, I told you, $5 for one uh, hotel Bible or $1.80 for a testament can go a long way in reaching people for Christ. Pastor, I want to say thank you for allowing me to come and speak this morning, and thank you, Harmony Baptist Church, for your support of the Gideon ministry. God bless you, and keep up the good work. Thank you.
started talking. Well, uh, I'll tell you what we talked about just for a minute. If you remember, Kurt had been in the church, been going there for a long time, been doing things, but he got this uh, hunch that we talked about there being the United Brown Man or what that is. It's the desires of his people. The pastor told him, he said, man, I really like you. You do a lot for the church. He said, why don't you go with me on a mission trip? And he said they would go to church every Sunday, leave church every Sunday. He said, I went into that build, that village, and I worked on this house. I worked on the bookstore. I worked on that. I worked, worked on the church. I worked on the place where they were fed and this and that. And he goes, all those things I was doing, I was just trying to get done so we could leave. Trying to get done so we could leave. He said, I've done all those things without food. He said, I've done every bit of it without food. He said, we have these morning devotions, and these people would come, and they would just Jesus had blessed him so much, and he said, man, I told him, I need to go so I can work the glue dry on my home and we can leave for the next phase. He said the last day they were getting ready to go on the bus, this young kid came up to him and he goes, thank you for the water in my home. Thank you for what you have done for my family. Well, I'll see you next year. He said that's when the feeling started hitting he got on the back of the bus and he was sitting there and he said a tear started coming out. He wiped that tear and he said, no, nah, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. I'm, I'm going to do this without feeling. 
He said the little kid was started waving at him and running around the bus to get his attention. He said the tears started coming again. He said the pastor leaned over on him. He said, it's okay to be obedient to Christ. Amen. He said, it's okay to be obedient. So me and this man standing in the parking lot at the 1800 building down at Cummin, and we're both crying like little babies, grown men standing in the parking lot. You would have thought our wives were in the morgue. But we were standing out here crying, but what we were crying about was the feeling that God gives us. You know, sometimes we get up and we get excited and we'll wave our hands and we'll clap and we'll dance because we want people to see our feelings. Listen to me real close. We want people to know that I have a feeling. But I want you to know something today. Listen to me real close. David Hart, you're going to love this today. Sometimes we have a thing called show, but sometimes we have a thing called substance, folks. Listen to me real close. What this man told me standing there in that parking lot was substance. And, and it brought me to this scripture, and I want to read it to you today because I believe some of us, listen to me, I real close today, I believe some of us have had it placed upon us. I, I'm not even going to read the scripture. You, you go and you find it, but it says there there was a man who was born blind from his birth. And the, 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 they asked, they said, who sinned? His, his mother or his father or this young man? And he said, no one has sinned. He said, he's been made blind so that the word that works of God may be made manifest. And it says that he came and he brought him there and he began to make a spittle out of the clay. And he began to put this substance, listen to me real close. He began to put this substance over his eyes. And the Bible uses this word. And uh, oh, I, I want you to know sometimes you get people scared when you start talking about it. The Bible says he anointed his eyes with the mixture, with the substance. He anointed his eyes with it and he put it on and he looks at him. Listen to me how crazy this sounds today. He looks at him. When you say, listen, you say, I'm not qualified to do that job. I'm not qualified to teach. I'm not qualified to sing. I'm not qualified to lead. I'm not qualified to dig a ditch. But he looks at a blind man. Jesus looks at a blind man who he just covered his eyes with spittle and clay and says, go wash. He said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. He said, go wash. Listen to me today. That story could have changed right there. And that man said, I'm not going to wash. And he started digging it off and he said, I'm done. Who am I? What if he had been a name and, and says, is, is, is there not better rivers for me to go and dip in? Well, is there not a better place? Why do I got to get in the, the river Jordan and dip seven times? Uh, what, what about if, uh, what if it had been that guy? Am I not good enough that Jesus should come in and just make all things new and set me right without any effort from me, without any uh, charge from me, without anything that I need to do? But it was the substance that made it right. It was having faith enough to stand still and let God put the substance on there to start with. Folks, I want you to listen to me real close today. We can put on the biggest show ever was, but if we let the substance take place in our lives, if we let the substance have hold of us, if we let the substance move inside of us, I want you to know something today. You can stand still with your hands in your pocket and you can move mountains today. If you'll let the substance purge out of you and let the Spirit... That's what I'm talking about today when I say substance. There's a spirit that bears witness. Uh, and when it comes out of you today, let me tell you today, let me, let me just say this, when that spirit comes out of you, people will know today. Right. And it will be known. You say, what does this have to do with communion? We're going to take a substance here in a minute. But I want you to know something with all that's in me that is. It's not about this physical piece of bread and this physical cup of wine. It's about the substance that made us uh, have reference to this piece of bread and this cup of wine. And that substance is, the Bible says, he said, I'm going to go away, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send something to stay with you. I'm going to send you a Holy Spirit. Listen to what happened to that man when he went to the pool of Siloam. He went down there blind. 
I believe with all that's in me that is that when he got to the edge of that pool and he began to kneel down, when the first drops of water hit his face, I believe his sight was restored. I believe it was restored that quick. And I believe he began to see a vision, an image that he had never seen before. He began to see a reflection. Listen to me real close. Uh, uh, listen to this part of it, how, how God makes it real. That This man made it surreal for me that day. He said, I've never seen me doing any of the things that I'm doing now. Uh, let me tell you something today. You need to be able to see yourself doing what God has called you to do. Uh, you are your biggest cheerleader. You are your biggest uh, uh, encouragement today. If you yourself can say, I know that I know that I know I'm doing what God has called me to do, then no one else should doubt you today. But if you doubt yourself today, if you doubt what you're doing today, if you can't see yourself doing it, then you probably shouldn't be doing it today. You probably shouldn't be. But as he went and the people said, he's a changed person. Well, maybe he's the one that said, Beg. maybe he's not. Maybe he is, maybe he's not. He was the same man. But his spirit bore a reflection of Jesus Christ. He had something new about him. I want you to know today, somebody here, we're, we're going to ask the deacons if they would come up and, and, and we're going to prepare the table. But somebody here today may be saying, I, I could never imagine me being in this place. I could never have imagined me being where I am today and what I am today and doing for God what I do for God. I never could have imagined it. You limited God when you said you couldn't imagine that. Because I'll tell you today, God knew from the very beginning of you, He knew He was going to place you here. He knew He was going to use you here. You've just got to see yourself doing it. You've got to see yourself having the power to do those things. As I talked to this man a little bit longer, I asked him, I said, well, was it just the mission trip? He goes, no. He said, brother, now I cut, I cut my work short on Wednesdays. And he goes, yeah, I'm in my work clothes. He said, but you know what? I went in the kitchen and I said, what can I do? And they said, we need a dishwasher. He said, now I'm a plumber five days a week and I'm a dishwasher for the Lord on Wednesday night. So, so he said, I've never seen myself doing that. I said, well, what, what do you think the next thing's going to be? He said, well, I'm really hoping I can move up to bus boy where I can go out and bust the tables. But I want you to know something. Through all that, we could have talked about a lot of things. But through all that, God had this message for Harmony Church. See yourself doing God's work. See yourself doing what God wants you to do. Because if you can't see yourself doing it, you're living in God. If you can't see yourself doing what God wants you to do, you're limiting Him. I'd ask you, I'm, I'm going to call him. I've texted him two times this week. Still haven't asked him his name. But I'm going to find out his wife's information because she stage one breast cancer. And that's what she was having. It was a lumpectomy that morning. I know she's doing well. We've texted back and forth. But I, I'm going to tell you this. God puts people together for a reason. See yourself doing God's work. See yourself doing what God is having to do. Those of you who want to turn your Bibles to the 26th chapter of the book of Matthew, that's what we'll be reading from for communion. I'm asking Miss Tina if she'll come play. <coughs> ask the deacons if they'll come forward. I'm going to ask the deacons if they would line up right across the front just for a moment. We're missing a couple today. I want to ask them if they'll line up right across the front. We have a lot of visitors. We have a lot of new members here with us. A lot of people that may not know some of these men. We, of course, are missing our uh, eldest deacon today, Brother Wayne Garrett's not with us. Brother Wayne normally plays the guitar. He's been under the weather. He's not with us. Brother Kelly is not with us today. He's feeling sick and under the weather as well. Starting at that end down there, <coughs> one of our Eldest Deacons as well. Uh, he's he's uh, earned that title, hasn't you, Brother Mike? Been around a while. Been around a while. Brother Mike's been here about his whole life. Brother Mike Henson on the far left, my far left. Next will be Brother Bill Garrett. And one of our newer Deacons, Brother Porky Chambers. Robert Porky Chambers. I'll let y'all know. Y'all won't have to go read an obituary to find out his real name. <laughs> like I had to. 
but Porky Chambers in the middle, Brother Ricky Chastain, uh, just lives right up the road here. If you ever need your car washed, waxed, vacuumed out, whatever it may be, he's always available, always home. Then our other, our other newest speaker here, Brother Gabe Henderson, and then our chairman of our deacon board, Brother Kip Brown. And, uh, so that will just give y'all some introduction of who these men are and who will be serving you today. I want you to do this right now. We're going to have a word of prayer. Before these men take on this table, you know, we do a thing that we go out to eat, and if we went out to eat with you, where everybody places their finger on their nose. And the last one to do that has to pray. But it's funny you stand up. Come here for a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some people see you doing something you don't see yourself doing. Someone's got a button on that. Sometimes John moves on us and he lets us know that what we need to do in the service. And when we come in this morning, before now, have I even spoke to you today? We've not even had a chance to speak. <laughs> See, Matt, you're not the only one. But I've kind of tried to stay away from you because I would have ended up asking him to do this. And he'd say, you sure? Or he'd say, let me think about it. Or I'll get back to you. But uh, Brother Josh is probably one of the most honest and forefront people I know. He's going to tell you exactly how it feels. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> Amen? Amen. But I also know he loves the Lord. And he has his family in his church. And so uh, this morning as we were trying to think, you know, sometimes can, communion can get mundane. We can just go through an order and we push through it. And it loses its savor. It loses its luster. And it should be the most important service of the year, folks. It should be the one we spend the most time praying for, the one we spend the most time getting ready for. And sometimes we don't. We forget. We don't announce it. We just cry. But guess what? We're here and we're serving him today. But the Lord this morning as we were praying, he said, Brother Josh is going to pray for the deacons and the church before we uncover the table. So Brother Josh, will you lead us in a word of prayer as we prepare this table and get ready to prepare this table? Amen. Lord, we just thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine that's come out while we've been in this service, Lord. I pray, Lord, that your spirit would fall all over this place, Lord. Just find somebody with substance, Lord, and just pour into them. Lord, I pray for these men that stand before this table, Lord. I know that they make hard decisions for the church sometimes. Lord, I pray, Lord, they would just be in and amidst them. Amongst them, Lord. And if I seem to make decisions, I want your will be done and not always what they want to be done. Lord, be with this church, this church family. And we're growing like crazy, Lord. And just be with us and allow us to make the right decisions, Lord. And bring people in and bring people to you, Lord. Bless this communion, special, special time. All I think ask your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
bring it all to the table. There's nothing he ain't seen before. For all your sin, all your sorrows, and your sadness, there's a Savior and he calls. Bring it all to the table. He can see the
unto them in the 23rd and answer, he said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, uh, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. What does that mean? Jesus knows your heart today. Jesus knows your convictions today. If you have been saved, he knows it. If you've not, he knows it. So today as this comes to you and you've not been saved, please, you'll be a stronger person and, and people will love you a whole lot more if you just refrain. Mothers, dads, if you know your children's not been saved, it'll be so much more special to them on the day they get to take it if you place your hand over them and say, it's not for you just yet. So and, and as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body. The deacons have already broken the bread here and I'm going to ask them if they would to come up at this time and, and to get ready to serve you. So if you men will stand and we're going to have a prayer over the bread. Brother Seth Stiles, I'm going to ask you if you'll lead this prayer. And then I'm going to ask him to pass it out. And everyone will hold it. And then we'll all take it together. Brother Seth, if you would. God, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for letting us be here in your presence today, Lord, to celebrate such a special time in church, Lord, to celebrate that of our salvation, Lord. Just thank you for our own salvation and each one in this church, Lord, as, as much like Paul is and the trees and the leaves begin to die and we can get made new again in the spring, Lord. Thank you for that eternal change in our life that was made, Lord. Just please bless this unleavened bread, Lord, as we take it. In the name of Christ. Amen. Christine, if you'll play softly, we're going to ask the deacons to serve the church. Just suppose God searched through heaven.
red being the wine and the clear being the grape juice, whichever you may prefer, you've got an option of both in the containers as it comes by. But as you drink this, you can feel it going down your throat the same way I felt Jesus coming into my body when he accepted me and he saved me. I have a conscious being of something else is inside of me. Something else belongs inside of me now, and it was Jesus. We love you. We thank you. Brother Stan Worley, will you say the blessing for the cup? Heavenly <clears throat> Father, Lord, we just thank you. There's no way we can thank you enough. the deacons if they would serve the church. Till my rapture 
Special couple of special items we need to take care of. So at this time, if you'll just bear with us for a moment, we're going to go into a call to conference. At this time, I'd entertain a motion. Brother Joey, are you ready? Yes. I'd entertain a motion that we go into a call to conference. Brother Seth Town. I make a motion that we go into a call to conference. Brother Fortune Chamber. Second that motion. I've got a motion to second. 